Hey, what's up, my friends? JT DeBolts with you today for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome, your 15 minutes of education, motivation, and inspiration to help you get your day started off right. I've got a question for you. What are you doing right now in your business that is changing the game? Not just changing the game for you, but changing the game for other people. What is it right now that you're doing that causes people to stop what they're doing, drop whatever's going on in their life, and actually pay attention to you? Now, we're not just talking about getting eyeballs on your website or getting people to click. What we're talking about is actually influencing people. I'm going to be talking to you today about three things that you can be doing and should be doing. In fact, you must be doing if you want to be a game changer in business. So as you're jumping out, let me know where you're tuning in from. And as you do, let me say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from on the big blue marble. Thanks for joining us here each and every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for your 15 minutes of education, motivation, and inspiration to get your day started off right. I see Bart Ripple. What's happening, brother? Hope things are uh, warm in Cleveland. I'm actually coming to you guys, by the way, from not so sunny Los Angeles, California. We are at the uh, Fast Track Workshop uh, doing some really awesome stuff, and I am on fire this morning. I cannot wait to get to the topic, so I just want to say hello to folks. What's up, Rebecca Grant? Good to see you, my friend. Samra Mai in the house. What's up, Samra? Good to see you. Candace uh, Munoz, hello from Texas. Good to see you. Myra Reedy is in the house from Atlanta, Georgia. Great to see you guys. Okay, listen, um, we're just kicking off day one here in the workshop. In fact, let me show you. We're here in LA. Um, you could probably see in the, uh, in the reflections there, but there's the palm trees and there's the pool and all the fun stuff that goes along with being in Southern California. For those of you who live in Southern California, uh, you're quite blessed. The weather's awesome. And I have to say, even though it's overcast here, coming from Seattle where it's been a little bit rainy and uh, <laughs> dark, it's kind of nice to be out here. It's actually brighter than it looks, uh, so it's very cool. Anyway, so we're getting ready to start day one today. And um, hey, what's going on, Myra? Good to see you. Chuck Hewen coming in from South Carolina. Good to see you, my friend. And we were talking a little bit, just uh, kind of getting the weekend going as we do. Uh, this is typically a three-day workshop, so we do them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, day one, we welcome folks in. We do some introductions, get to know each other. Uh, today was very unique, though. It was a very special uh, kind of kickoff to the workshop because we actually had none other, than, none other than our own CEO, TJ Irway. Tim Irway was here, and uh, he started the morning off talking a little bit about, really, I think what might be a big misconception about what EMP is. Um, one of the misconceptions that we get from a lot of folks is, hey, I don't want this to conflict with my network marketing company, right? Maybe you've heard this. If you ever heard that before, maybe even thought about it, thought, oh, this is gonna be kind of a bait and switch. Um, if I join EMP, they're gonna want me to promote EMP, which by the way, nothing could be further from the truth. We don't, we're not asking you to do that. I think it's kind of a nice uh, benefit. You know, if you do uh, wanna promote EMP, you've got that extra stream of income. But I'll tell you really what it's about um, here in just a second. But I'm curious if you've ever felt that uh, personally or heard it from other people where they think, yeah, EMP is just trying to get me to promote them. What I really want to do is build my network marketing company. If you've ever had that experience or heard other people say that, give me a one in the chat box. Uh, Jan Fansler says, it looks like a great place. It is a great place, actually. Um, I, I love LA. It's, it's a lot of fun to be down here. I haven't been in Southern California in a while, so it's, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, Bart says 27 degrees in Cleveland. Brother, hang in there, man. Bundle up and uh, stay warm. I understand. So... One thing that was kind of interesting about what TJ was talking about is, you know, a lot of times folks are thinking this is a, this could pose as a conflict. And maybe you've heard this from your upline. Uh, maybe you've heard it from people outside of your business. There are people that inside your life that you care about. Could be a spouse. Could be somebody that, uh, you know, has a vested interest in your success. And they're going, hey, man, this EMP thing is just meant to uh, distract you or to pull you away. And they want you to just, uh, you know, promote their stuff. And just like TJ said, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, we love it when you do because you grow and, uh, you know, obviously your income grows. But what we're really here to do is to teach business skill sets. Business skill sets. We're a training company first and foremost. We're not an MLM. Uh, we're definitely not a biz op. We're a training company. And the purpose of today's uh, DDOA conversation is to talk about the three things that can actually help you be a game changer in your business. And the great thing is, is that you are absolutely in the right place at the right time because this is what we are all about. The very first thing that we talk about, uh, one of the first things you got to do to be a game changer is you've got to build assets, okay? What do I mean by that? 
as a business leader, you're going to have a lot of folks that are going to come to you. They're going to want help, uh, especially if you are promoting something that's in the network marketing niche. Uh, they typically are going to have, you know, concerns maybe about their health, maybe about their finances, whatever the area of expertise, the area of focus that your company's in, you're going to have folks that are in some form of pain, discomfort, uh, you know, dis, you know, whatever you, you know, disconnected from their happiness, they are going to want a better way of life. And perhaps you, your company, your products can do that. Um, when it comes to EMP, we talk about this all the time because we're like, hey, you know, one of the biggest uh, concerns we have that people come to us with is I want to build my business online. Now, you can still press the flesh. You can still do the brick and mortar thing or you can still do the offline thing all day. What, what we specialize in is giving the skill sets and the, and the ability to actually build the business online, which obviously is very leverageable. Uh, you can reach a lot of people. Like right now, we've got 15 people on this thing viewing as I say this right now. But there are 15 people from around the world, as we were just saying, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, South Carolina, Cleveland, um, you know, people coming in from Canada. And so what's interesting, uh, there's Michelle Felicia, right? She's over, clear over on the other side of the pond, for crying out loud. That's not possible uh, with a offline business. You'd have to go travel to all these places in order to connect to them. So is one better than the other? Absolutely not. They're totally complementary. And that's the thing that we're pretty stoked about. But in order for you to really be a game changer, to be seen as that game-changing leader in your business, you have to be building assets. Now, what do I mean by an asset? What do you guys think I mean when we talk about building assets? Michelle, Felicia, got us. You said you got to build assets. Uh, Jan says the list is your best asset. Oh, spot on. A list, your your email list, your list of subscribers, your list list of people that are following you, is absolutely uh, key and essential for your, you know, as, as being probably one of the most valuable assets that you can actually create. And so I was listening to TJ talk about this today. And I was thinking, man, that is so clear. That is so awesome. Because if you are building a list, you could do so many things with that list. It doesn't matter whether you are promoting a healthcare uh, line or a skincare line, or you're promoting a financial awareness line, whatever it is you're promoting, you've got a group of folks from all over the world who are now interested in what you have to do and what you have to say and what you have to provide and what you actually show up to with the, in the marketplace with. So that list is the very, one of the most important assets that you can build. Um, and I see some, I see lots of folks chiming in here, social media followers. Uh, exactly. Bart, that's another great uh, example of a, of an asset is a social media followers. So what we're really talking about is a following, right? You've got human beings, that are paying attention to what you have to talk about. So you got your list, which is electronic, basically, right? It's a, it's a list of emails. That's one asset. The other asset is your actual followers. Now, here's what's interesting is your social media followers can be the same people that are on your email list. So it's possible that it's the same human being, right? But, the pot, but what's great is you have two separate ways to connect with them. This is huge, and this is one of the things that I love about what we do with EMP, but most specifically how it applies to any kind of business, even, even something that could be a brick and mortar business. Heck, you could have, and we do have several students that come through the workshops that have brick and mortar businesses. We have uh, people that own trucking companies. We have people who are uh, naturopaths. We have people that are chiropractors. We have people that uh, you know, do physical therapy, for instance. And so you don't just have to be a network marketer. If you are a network marketer, great. It can actually benefit you. But those, those game-changing things that you got to do, number one, is you have to be building assets. Could be like we're talking about here, your email list. Uh, as Bart said, you're, you're following. The other thing you're going to be building is your brand. All right, Your personal brand is an asset. And what's beautiful about your personal brand is it's unique to you. So what I like to tell my students and what I've been saying for years, even to my private coaching clients back when, my, um, you know, when I was really working my personal coaching, uh, was your brand is your truth, all right? Your brand is your truth, I'll say that again. Your brand is not just some cool looking website, right? Your brand is not just the colors that you choose, uh, it's not just your logo, it's not just all the pictures, it's not just the, uh, the stuff that you do, you know, how you wanna be seen, a catchy tagline, it's not just that, it's your truth. Now, if you approach your brand from that aspect and you go, okay, this is the asset I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build this brand, uh, it's gonna be something that's gonna put money in the bank for the rest of my life. It's something that's never going to go out of style because it's me. Like you don't have to worry about, you know, is, uh, is Nike going to go out of style? Is Nike going to get bought out? Is, uh, you know, Alaska airlines going to buy out Virgin, which is exactly what they did. Now all of a sudden that brand is gone. Your brand 
probably will never get bought out. Now, maybe you get fortunate and uh, somebody big and famous buys your brand and you can sell out and become, you know, a high priced millionaire, you know, make all this money. That's possible too. But see, when it's an asset and it's valuable, that's the thing that draws people to you. And that's how you can continue to uh, grow and scale your business through your brand. So again, your brand is your truth. What is it you stand for? All right. What is it you stand for? What are your values, your vision, your mission, and your purpose? Those four things are the cornerstone. You guys have heard me say this a lot on the Daily Dose. Those are the cornerstones of a successful business and really, frankly, a successful life, in my humble yet accurate opinion. <laughs> but those four things, if you can have those, um, they're absolutely going to help you kind of, they're going to serve as those cornerstones, those cornerstones or the legs of the table, if you want to think of it that way. Um, if this is making sense to you guys, give me a two in the chat box. I want to make sure that uh, we're all tracking on the same flight path here and uh, getting where we want to go. Uh, Kathy says, lost you. Hopefully it wasn't uh, the internet connection. Hopefully this is, um, I'm staying with you guys. Um, now, the uh, sound is gone and the video was interrupted. Bummer deal. Hopefully it's back. I'm not sure because I'm outside, so hopefully the uh, internet is still good to go. It says I'm live and I still got people showing up, so um, I apologize, gang. I hope, that, uh, hope I didn't lose you guys. Great. So now that you've built this, we've, we've identified what those assets are. Your list, your social media following, your personal brand. There's probably a lot more we could talk about, but just for simplicity's sake for today, let's just keep it to those three. The next thing that you want to be doing is feeding it daily. All right, so it's great to have a website up. It's great to have a social media following. It's great to be building a list, but what are you doing with it? Right, so I've got a list. I've, one of my lists that I have is several thousand people deep, but I have barely communicated with them in a very long time. This particular list, is it fair for me to come out on one day and go, "Hey guys, I've got this awesome program. I think you should buy it." Well, it's fair, but it's probably going to be pretty ineffective, right? They're probably going to go, "Hey JT, uh, I love what you're doing, and I don't love what you're all about, uh, but dude, you haven't you haven't fed us in a while." So when I talk about feeding it on a daily basis, what I'm talking about is showing up and doing the work, getting stuff done. Right, So it might be a post. It might be an engagement post. It might be, hey, listen, you might actually go out and ask for the sale. It's totally cool. There should be no resistance on your part to do so. But just remember, it's about feeding those assets on a daily basis to keep them strong, to keep them growing, to keep them nourished, really, in the truest sense of the word. So if you're showing up, you're giving great content, you're giving great value, you are going to be seen as a game changer in your business. People are going to show up because they can trust you. They know you're going to show up with consistency. They know you're going to deliver great stuff. And even if they don't necessarily connect with everything you do every single time, they're going to see you as the type of person that does what they say they're going to do. They're going to see you as the kind of person that shows up and actually wants to help them move forward in their business and in their life. So if that's making sense for you guys, let me know what's going on here. Uh, Bart says he's reading me five by five. Right on, dude. I like that. Five by five. I haven't heard that in a long time. Um, the, the biggest thing that you can do is show up on a daily basis, even on the days when you don't feel like it, even on the weekends, even on the holidays, on some level, it doesn't mean you've got to be married to this thing where it's like, like a ball and like, like, you know, something around your waist or around your, your ankle. You're not, it's not like you're on house arrest, right? It's something though that you're deeply committed to like you would be um, a lover or a life, lifetime partner, right? It's something where you say to yourself, man, I love what I do. I believe in my, my brand and in my business. And on some level, I'm going to give it some sort of nurturing on a daily basis. When you approach it from that commitment level, it effervesces in everything you do, right? It shows up in your language pattern. It shows up in uh, the quality of the work you do. Not just the quantity of the work, but the quality of the work. You know what I'm saying? And that's what people can see. And that's, listen, if you want to be seen as a game changer, this is as simple as it gets. You do not have to be the person that has 50,000 followers. You don't have to be the person that's living in the mansion by the water, that's got all the fancy stuff. That's great. And perhaps those people are game changers. But for sure, you can be a game changer before all of those externally tangible kind of stuff starts showing up. All right? By the way, those assets you build are tangible. Those are things that you get to keep. Your list People talk about, well, I'm going to put money into my ad, uh, but I'm concerned about that. I'm thinking to myself, what's the concern? You are building, like, you get that back. You get to keep that. For every dime you put into your ad, when you get, ad, when you get leads, that's a valuable asset you are building. So remember what it is the purpose, what, what the purpose is, 
behind putting money into an ad or running an ad in the first place, right? It's not just about making sales. It's also about building that list and developing the relationship with people that will buy from you. If they don't buy from you right now, they'll definitely buy from you down the road. All right, if this is working, if you guys are catching me with this, give me a high five in the chat box. I wanna see if you guys are, uh, if this is making sense. Lots of folks uh, giving it up here. That's awesome, good to see you guys. Really appreciate each and every single one of you. Um, yeah, uh, I really hope Kathy, Kathy, Ethan, Kathy Eaton Copeland says, uh, been in and out three times, hopefully can catch the recording later. Yeah, I apologize, gang. Hopefully the internet connection is uh, working here. I have no idea because it seems like it's working on my end. So uh, with any luck, this thing will be a decent recording and you can see it later. The last thing I want to share with you on this, guys, and it's so important if you want to be a game changer in your business is, and by the way, thank you very much for everybody who's showing up and, and, uh, and, and given the, uh, the high fives, I appreciate that. It's very cool to see. The last thing you really want to talk about here is besides just building your list and, and besides feeding your list and your brand and your, and your following on a daily basis is you also want to be building your intellectual capital. Probably one of the most important things you can do. I've heard people say this before. Uh, you know, I, I think Nelson Mandela said it. He was saying, you know, while I was in prison, they took everything from me. They took his house, they took his car, they took his family, they took his freedom, but they could not take his intellectual capital, right? He continued to feed his mind. He continued to uh, develop himself mentally, uh, academically, and that's the same thing you can do in your business. It doesn't matter how high or how low your business goes. If you are, are a constant student, and by student, I'm not just talking about consuming information. I'm talking about learning something and applying it and tweaking it and, and developing that skill set along with it. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the intellectual capital, right? If you're building intellectual capital, this is what TJ was saying just earlier this morning, and I was like, man, that is brilliant. If you're building intellectual capital, you will be a game changer in your business. It's just a matter of time. Intellectual capital, what does that look like? What does it mean to you? When you guys hear that term intellectual capital, what does that mean to you? What's an example that perhaps you're building in your business right now, or if you're not, something that you want to work toward building? What's an example of this? Um, Bart says, show me a successful entrepreneur and I will show you a voracious reader. I tend to agree with you, buddy. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I love that. What is your example of uh, intellectual capital? For me personally, I like to think of it as a skill set, not just knowledge. All right. So knowledge is, hey, there's information floating around. Uh, one plus one equals two is an example. That's information. If I take it on board and I, and I can intellectualize what that actually means to me and put meaning to it, now it's knowledge. But in order for it to really sink in and actually have any kind of tangible worth and value, I have to apply it, right? I have to be able to put one plus one equals two into action in my daily basis or in my daily life or on some capacity in my business. Maybe it's not daily, but it's continual. That's, that's my example of it. So I'm curious what you guys, what your example is. Samra says mastering copywriting. Exactly. That's another great one. Um, intellectual capital learning how to create a capture page. Perfect. Because all of those things, by the way, what can you do with them? Now you've taken, it's inside your head, right? But if you've, if you've mastered copywriting or if you've learned how to create a capture page, what can you do with that? Now think about that for two seconds. This is where it really, really becomes pretty powerful and pretty cool. Once you've taken information and applied it, you can then teach other people, right? Or serve other people. Maybe you open up a, a, a firm, you know, an agency that does that kind of stuff for folks, if that's your jam. Or maybe it's just your ability to do it on a consistent basis and plug other people into those skill sets as well. You don't have to be the one teaching them. Maybe you bring them over here and let us do it for you. But my point is, is that when you have these types of skill sets and you have these types of intellectual capital working for you, you will be seen as a game changer because you will be authentically a game changer. You'll be somebody who's showing up on a daily basis, applying not just your knowledge, but your expertise and your experience that comes through doing it on a daily basis, getting stuff done, right? And that's literally how the game is changed. It's by you showing up, and getting stuff done. So remember, you have a pretty awesome thing going here. We love to you know, talk about our community here and see how, how everybody kind of blends together and works together and comes from different you know, uh, backgrounds, different levels of experience, uh, different motivations, different, different ideas. But what's really cool is to see everybody coming together and doing it as a team and doing it as a community. All right, my friends, hope you got some great stuff out of today. It's my privilege and an honor to come at you guys anytime I get a chance. So thanks very much for showing up. Remember, we do this every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. 
right here for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome. Go out there, have an amazing weekend. Do the things you love to do. Spend time doing them with the people you love being around. And remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, and fly far. We'll see you again.